All right, so before we get started, let me just first explain the angle that I'm coming from here. So NZXT, they're usually a company that I feel would create innovative and cool products. Some examples would be their liquid coolers, which are super popular for good reason. You've got unique features, a high quality product, and with actually good performance. Their mid tower cases as well, maybe not so special on the performance side of things, but in my opinion, one of the cleanest, most timeless designs that you can buy today. And one of my personal favorites recently, the new NZXT, H1 V2, great performance, extremely easy to build in, and the first kit approach to an ITX PC, which I'm a big fan of. But then they go and make stuff like this, which honestly has no reason to exist. Their new mechanical keyboard is a lousy take on what should be, you know, a gaming keyboard, and their new Lyft gaming mouse is just extremely average with better alternatives already existing on the market for a few years now. These two products, they don't innovate, they don't contribute anything at all to the gaming peripheral space, and it's a real shame that this is what they think is worth bringing to the market. Let's start with their new Lyft gaming mouse first, because this is at least the better one of the two. And you know what? Spec-wise, it's actually not that bad. It's using a PMW. 3389 sensor, Omron 20M switches that actually feel pretty well tuned, and an okay soft cable. The best part about this mouse by far is the coating that they've used here on the shell, which reminds me a lot of the Endgame Gear XM1. This coating does attract fingerprints and skin oils pretty heavily, but it is super, super grippy, so big thumbs up to NZXT here. Overall, the NZXT lift is pretty well put together, and the buttons feel and sound pretty decent. Input lag for the switches though is pretty bad at over 27 milliseconds from end to end. That effectively means that you're playing with an additional 16 milliseconds of input lag over the Razer Viper. And overall, it's one of the slowest name brand gaming mice that I've tested. NZXT have likely implemented a debounce time of over 10 milliseconds here because they're afraid of encountering returned mice for double clicking. But as we can see, it's at the huge cost of performance. Are you going to notice that additional 15 milliseconds or so over other mice? No, probably not, but an extra 15 milliseconds is still there, and it still does have the potential to affect your performance. If you play on a 240Hz monitor, for example, your clicks will be delayed by about 4 frames. Shape and weight wise, NZXT have also played things incredibly safe here, and in my opinion, they've been looking very closely at the Razer Viper. And that's really the main point here. The NZXT Lift is not a terrible gaming mouse. Input lag aside, as that's something that can be corrected in a future update, there's just no real point getting this mouse over the Razer Viper. The Viper is the same weight, pretty much the same shape, can be found a little bit cheaper most of the time, and it actually has stuff going for it like optical switches and good performance. The most confusing of the two though is definitely the keyboard. Now, the mechanical keyboard market is one that has seen a lot of growth over the past year, and I think that's primarily due to companies, you know, actually considering what makes a good typing experience. So, for example, looking at what custom keyboards are doing, looking at how those improve the typing experience, and also looking at how keyboard keyboard modders are modding their keyboards and then implementing that into pre-built designs. What NZXT have done though is basically none of that. They've skipped what makes a good typing experience and the result is a very poor sounding and poor feeling $130 mechanical keyboard. So basically, instead of focusing on what a good typing experience should be, in other words, soft mounting, good sound dampening, and an overall premium feel, we get a volume dial on the top left, which feels extremely cheap, and three buttons on the side, the only useful one being the Windows lock key. Keycaps are not something that I usually talk about extensively when it comes to keyboards, because usually they're all just fine, but these ultra smooth plasticky keycaps I am really not a fan of. They're very cheap feeling, and something that you'd expect on a much, much 
much cheaper keyboard. 30 minutes into gaming and they start feeling oily, greasy, and that doesn't inspire much confidence at all. And the last talking point here about this keyboard is that it is hot swappable, meaning that you can swap out the stock switches for something that you prefer instead, maybe a set of lube switches for example, but I just really struggle to think who would actually be doing that. And what I really mean here is that for a keyboard to be worth being hot swappable, it has to have a pretty good bass, it has to have, you know, a solid feel to it, it has to have decent sound dampening, you know, something that when you do switch to a more premium switch, you are left with a pretty good typing experience. Are you really gonna swap the switches out in this thing? I mean, even if you do swap to a lubed nice switch that you might like, you are still left with bad stabilizers, a hollow feeling case, a rattly feel, and just overall a really cheap experience. Honestly, that's really all I have to say about this thing. At the same price, you're much better off with a Ducky 1.3 SF or TKL, or spending a few extra bucks and getting yourself a Keychron Q2. I've reviewed both of those boards, big fan of them, and I'll leave them linked down below. So I really hope that NZXT will take this advice on the chin and go back to the drawing board when it comes to gaming peripherals. I understand that this is their first attempt at a gaming mouse and keyboard and you know maybe they're not trying to be the best but I just feel that there's nothing of value here at all. There's no innovation, there's no creative features, the stuff that we've come to expect from a company like NZXT. Because let's face it, NZXT are a huge machine. They have a ton of resources at their disposal and it's pretty disappointing to see them just further saturate the gaming peripheral market with products that feel very uninspired. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the new gaming peripherals from NZXT and I really hope that their next attempt is going to be a lot better. I'll leave some links down below to some other gaming peripherals, other mice and keyboards that you should definitely check out instead of these ones. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.